Thanks very much, and thanks for joining here in the room, but of course also online. The title already is a mouthful. I'm going to demystify that a little bit in the next 20 minutes. But um, I, Benjamin, I thank you for that opening. But I obviously like the last slides more because there's something we can do. And if we want to get that fixed, it is actually even in this room, albeit also virtually, where we can do impact. And as the CEO of the S4 organization, together with the president, Jan Gilk, actually, where we are doing finance, logistics, manufacturing, all industry development, I think we have an obligation. And I think that obligation we want to share with you. Um, CEO is my night job. I have a day job, which is product success. And I think this is extremely helpful if you see how the things work to do the strategy and where do you put your euros to change it. So let's dive right into it because there is, of course, things that we need to do together. Um, when we talk about the why, what and how of that change, let me start with the why. We all heard about those challenges. We just saw it from Benjamin in the presentation before, and there are more. Is it the ship in the Suez Canal? Is it the wars that we're facing? Is it the constraints that we currently see in the supply chains? It's all of that. By the way, has been before, but our answer has always been, let's rethink, let's replan, let's maybe re-implement. And that is not agile. Agile by itself is a buzzword if we don't take it serious. We'll talk about that. And I'll give you one example right away. Supply chains have changed from demand-driven, how often did someone press on the button of your homepage, to what complete constraint-driven. And that is the agility we're faced. And we also heard that from Western Naha, you need to focus, you need to put actually the focus on those changes. We need to talk about differentiating processes. Differentiating processes are not making the same process just faster. We all can do that. We love those pictures of chevrons, and we just make it faster. That's not the answer. The answer is, how do I take it out? No user interface is the best user interface. A process that we have invented 15 years ago on technology and capabilities of 15 years ago is not the answer, and we need to talk about that. And last but not least, the way how we look at enterprise resource planning, and I'm long enough in that business to even understand what ERP means, will have a next frontier and that's the networked enterprise. You are actually constrained. You are in an environment, and I will talk about some examples, what we're investing there, what we're doing, but it needs you, it needs partners, it needs customers to embrace those changes. And we talked about sustainability, and this is by far not an altruistic topic. We saw that very clearly when Benjamin presented, but what does it mean for business? Where do we start to tackle? Are we looking at it by saying, I need to measure because I can't manage? Are we ingraining that into the solutions already today to be reactive because all those things, those strategic shifts that you see fit together? So let's jump into and to simplify it. I only have 20 minutes. So bear with me. There's a lot we can do, but we also need to focus. Number one, top line. That's not going to go away. We need to think about how digital twins can help us to react even before it happens. Take a manufacturing plant in Switzerland who produces the bodies of actually the Porsche Cayenne. Would that person wait till someone from Stuttgart calls him and says, I need five more? No. We need to have a digital twin. By the way, they run completely in the, in the cloud. They have zero paper and assets on their shelf, but they want to predict and when they want to predict, they need to look what is happening in the market. That's top line of the future. Of course, we need to measure. We need to have predictive maintenance if you buy and sell an outcome, not a product. We need to look at the bottom line. Everything needs to be improved. Machine learning five years ago has been a PhD concept, even for myself. Today, when I look at business processes to take out those chevrons, the, the systems, knowing the data, knowing your environment, knowing what you want to do, can help you. But where are the intelligent people who focus on the deviations, who focus on what is actually making a bigger impact? That is the power of data. That is the power of machine learning, AI, and whatever sophisticated technology you want to leverage from the platform. And last but not least, it is also about driving that in a sustainable way. 
In my night job, I'm thinking about how making this big organization more sustainable, and that is, again, focus. We need to get away from trying to do everything but mediocre, and we need you as customers, you as partners, the people in this room here, to actually also follow that focus and teach us that focus. But let's talk about three things of seismic shifts that I see in the market, in that what we offer, and that what we do together with you as partners. The first one, let's demystify cloud. Cloud is not how you manage that on what infrastructure. That's commodity today. Please go away, embrace that, reserve your resources, even if you have them, put them on more meaningful things. What cloud truly is, is the level of standardization. Are you willing? And are you able to go to the highest degree of standardization, which is represented by software as a service? We're good in the first S but we need to get better in the as-a-service thinking. Are we willing to change business processes to that degree of standardization which software as a service enables you, maybe also demands? And that is what cloud is about. And there needs to be a super clear and honest analysis where you are as a customer. If the only choice is that, the highest degree of standardization, then projects fail because 40% comes from the change of yourself, of the partner that you pick that helps us, of the solutions that you activate and not implement, that you configure, not customize, to get to the degree of standardization. And that is a hybrid world, and we need to embrace that. So when we make priorities, the question of simplification standardization is always question number one. While we need flexibility. Why would I punish someone who says, I'm willing to standardize the business process, but I have that last mile where I need to be very specific? Hopefully not the business process you invented 15 years ago with technology and people 15 years ago, but new processes, but that might be. So how flexible are we in a standardization? And how are we looking at the end-to-end -end process, which, by the way, as a matter of fact, goes beyond what I can offer, what my company can offer. And that is where we need to look at that agility. Is modularization a good thing? Is end-to-end -end process a good thing? Is deep integration a good thing? Yes, all those three things are good. But how do we compose them? Second topic, we need innovation from within. And I have a couple of examples here, and I want to give that also in the connection, of course, of getting to sustainability. Let's start with finance. I happen to believe as long as something is produced, even if it's a service, as long as something is shipped, even if it's a service, as long as something's going to be paid, there's a need for finance, manufacturing, logistics. And let's just focus on those three. There's much more we want and can do. In accounting, we need to come to a self-auditing finance. Well, sounds like a good buzzword. But why are we wasting so much time to fixing things after the fact if the system exactly knows every transaction, everything in your company and in your supplying supply chain? Why can't and finance not help to self-audit? Which means we focus on the exceptions. And you have a public regulated company and you know what the uh, public opinion is out there. You know why it is important to keep investing there. Even more so, we need to integrate sustainability very deep there. We're working on a carbon ledger in finance accounting. Come to that later, because if we say we know everything that we do, we need to start right there. Supply chains. I said change from demand-driven to constraint-driven. I predict that on the home pages of many, and even if you're in B2B, there will be a third button. We today have two. One is, I want this, ship it to me. The second button is, I want this, ship it to me on Monday, because I'm impatient and I pay more. There will be a third button. That means, ship it to me in a sustainable way. And that button will be a different shader about how you do business. Imagine that button even in your B2B business. That will make a difference in how and how much business and how good you can do business. But that button needs to be audited. Because if you have something that puts you aside or ahead 
or actually in front of your competition, people will start to judge it. So that button that you press, that you want to have something with less CO2 or more sustainable procured or produced, that one will then need to be audited. And that's the point where we need to go all the way down to the core of your business platform, which is the four is. In supply chain, the constraint-driven change, and we all know the events who led to that, they will not go away. That means we need to rethink. And a solution that you can configure, a solution that is pre-configured to change that from demand to constraint-driven, is not a simple task. You need focus partners like Western Nike exactly to do that. But I'm happy that I have a cloud solution where as a vendor I can go two steps further not giving you a toolbox where you need to fix it yourself. And there are much more examples which I'm willing to share, but let me look further and peel that onion where I think there is something that we're in together. And I personally happen to believe that the next frontier of an ERP is a networked ERP. We're talking since a while about networks. Let's tackle one very obvious, which is an asset network or procurement network. I personally believe we can even predict via big networks, how the economies will evolve even before we read it in the news. Because companies are intelligent. They react to what they sense. And the first thing that I often see is, you buy less. So I can see in those networks how it works. And we can take that further, because networks means there are many constituents. And as I'm a German, there's no analogy that I'm going to miss other than a car analogy. But let's look at the Catena X network, where finally players in the market, the OEMs, the suppliers, us as a vendor, the partners come together and we share data. We didn't share that data before because we said it's mine. We didn't share that because we didn't have those constraints. We didn't share because we were not with the back on the wall. And that's exactly why those networks are important, why we need to bring that. And leveraging that data, making the right business decisions, and changing the business process is what I see as a power in those networks. And believe me, some of those big players, they rather did it themselves. We did it five times, and now you ask me if that is sustainable. Just as a foot for thought. But let's go further. Let's talk about sustainable enterprises. If some of that, what I said, and I hope most of that is true, that we need visibility, that we need to change the business processes, how does sustainability play into that one? First of all, we also need to address it in a way that you, with your business, with your company, with your business processes, can cope with it. Don't greenwash. People will notice that third button will be audited. Prepare for that. And again, as I say, if you run a digital twin, prepare that digital twin to fast react to the external impacts that demand your agility. Let's look what we are doing, and we're not doing that because we think it's a good topic, and absolutely we agree what Benjamin has put out there. There is a train coming but we have means to address them. And a couple of things, and we try to, of course, cluster it, is visibility. So the sustainability control tower is the first thing you need to give your CEO. He wants to be in control, he should be in control, but he should be able to make the right decisions with the complexity designs behind. He will ask you for that button, you need to do the job to make that button a reality, to make it auditable, and influx it in your business processes. But you need to measure. Did we get better? Did we improve? How would you measure something that you never measured now going forward? That means start now. Second, if you develop something, if you produce something, and again, even if it is a service, look at your product footprint that you put. The people who you currently hire, the people that you put into your company, the partners that you allow and hopefully have to change management your business, they will expect that you have that clarity. And that's why it is not a climate action Friday for future thing. It is truly that I start to realize that this is the next currency. Not today, 
Maybe for you not tomorrow, but I believe you, before I retire, it will be your next currency. And that's exactly how we need to look at it. We should not overpace it, but we need to implant those things. And don't always put that on top or with a project or extract data, put it in an Excel sheet. I know those behaviors. Put it in the basis of what you do and how your business process look like. Circular economy, uh, Benjamin talked about that. For us, for example, responsible design and production. Let me talk about the production. If you don't have your network under control, if you don't understand how actually you address that, you might be left behind. And I don't want to sound like, hey, this world is bad and now you need to act. You need to have an intrinsic motivation. And the intrinsic motivation for these topics at SAP come for the people who understand the business value, but of course have the motivation to change things. Social responsibility, that's the only word I'm going to say in German, because as Germans we always try, someone sits somewhere and tries to put everything in one word. Lieferketten, Sorgsfalt, Pflichtgesetz. So, what is behind that is actually, if I look in my supply chain, I need to do due diligences. And yes, some countries, some industries, some regulators will be further than others. And you can complain all day long, it's like, whoa, it's another effort, it's another reporting. Well, let's pick the areas where we embrace it. And if you can spell it after my presentation, then I invite you to a coffee. But let's go with one very concrete example. And that is, how will sustainability enable us to do that footprint tracking that has an example in the value chain that you have in your company and beyond the gates of your company? How will you use the power of business networks behind that? And that is not simple. But let's start to tackle it very decisively. If you have logistics and logistics documents, if you have financial transactions, if you add the sustainable data, then you are on the right path. And all three are equivalent important in the future. And then you need to look at your business processes. And yes, you need to optimize that. If part of your business process you have in there and you embarked on a new platform like S4 and you're trying to put your old business processes as the same in the new one, you might have a red light along that way. And this is the first thing we need to look together. That means use a customer, use a partner, and us, we need to look together how that works. Is everything there already fleshed out? Absolutely not. I happen to believe, like Benjamin said, we can tackle whatever the outcome will be. There are much more macroeconomic topics we also need to look into. But us as companies, representing 72% of the worldwide GDP, where a lot is here online and in the room, we have that obligation, and that motivates me. That motivates me to talk even more about that not to convince you or to sell you more, to get that sense of urgency, we need to start somewhere. And that does mean don't only look in the constraints. The Americans say that, look above the cubic line. I'm pretty sure that Vestas was not awarded because they just were green, but they look deeply at their business processes. That doesn't work without partnerships. Vestanaha is a very important one of that, specifically if you happen to believe that third button sustainability in supply chain will come. But there's more. We need to get away from me too. We need to get away from, yeah, I just pick what I want. We need to get together that even the network to tackle sustainability is an important one, but it comes down to people. And that's why I'm going to, of course, invite you online to the sustainability navigator that we have put out there, where we share the thoughts, where we embrace that discussion, where we go in and codify what we learn from thousands and thousands of projects of engagements. It's free. You can look into that, but make it yours. Leverage that for your transformation to sustainability. Leverage that actually for your own path. Contribute, share, build out that community. That's what I wanted to share. Thanks for your attention, and I think there is hopefully questions. Thank you very much. So, and first of all, thank you very much for your presentation. As you just mentioned, we are checking on the audience here in Heidelberg. No raising hands. 
as well, nothing on the internet. You're all sleeping outside. Get awake, send us your questions. That, but this just means you have explained everything very, very well. Absolutely. Let's say I have watched your presentation now. I'm like totally convinced that I want to start my sustainability journey with mm. SAP today. What do you recommend? Where do I start? First of all, start today. Look at your business processes. Look at how you can change them. Get a partner, get a niche. Start. That, that's the only answer I can give. Don't wait for a release. Don't wait for a function. Just get started and get your head of your company, but also your people involved. That's how it works. Thank <laughs> you.